Hey y'all, uh, hope everyone will have or has had a great day. Today we'll be continuing on our journey to massacre HB food codes and today I'm going to present to you a different way of approaching this task. Instead of trying to deal with Caprice head on or go toe to toe against an Ash, why not just win before the co-op can set them up? And this is um, the basis of the prepaid kit deck that I'm going to showcase today. Instead of a deck that generates lots of economy for the late game, you want something that can burst right out of the gate and place immediate pressure on the corp. Um, legwork would be the key card in that particular matchup because legwork allows you to steal those very crucial 2-4 to four agenda points at the start of the game, allowing you to then close out the game much more easily because you only need to make one targeted indexing followed by a mad dash to close out the game. A lot easier of a task than trying to battle against Caprice and Ash uphill. This is by no means a new concept. If you look at my past videos way, way back, um, at least a year or more ago, I've been toying with this idea in different factions, even in Quetzo, because you can um, assert so much early pressure and ensure successful runs with Quetzal's ability to break barriers. But here we're going with Prepaid Kate, the shell of Prepaid Kate, simply because firstly, the burst economy is invaluable for getting past ice early, and secondly, um, SMC is in faction, along with all the breakers that you can tilt up for cheap. This allows you to guarantee um, your leg works when you really need them to. Finally, uh, most corps will not over defend HQ. If they have one or two agendas in hand, they'll typically make do with one piece of ice on HQ, not expecting you to run repeatedly, and guess what? You're not going to. You're simply going to make a good leg work, get two or four agenda points, and then set up for the late game. So let's see this deck in action, shall we? So this opening hand is all kinds of heavenly, isn't it? It contains every single card that I want in my opening hand. It has prepaid voice pad to sell the early basis of drip economy. It has lucky find for the early uh, burst economy. It has SMC for me to get through ice on HQ. And finally, it has leg work for me to, well, get agendas. Thing is, my opponent didn't actually ice HQ. So I'm like, well, my opponent mulliganed. Um, I guess I'm gonna check the remote first to see what it is, kind of scout out the deck and then go in for the legwork. Eve campaign, I'm gonna leave it there because I want to legwork here and steal a Vitruvius as well as Trash a Jackson. Uh, pretty hard decision here because uh, my opponent, I did see the friends early on the legwork run, but I figure that if my opponent is using uh, friends at this point to uh, recur Jackson, they are losing out. I'd rather have Jackson in the bin than for them to do something like install double draw, double draw this turn. So that was a victory in my eyes. I got an agenda off the legwork. That's exactly what I needed. I did get set back a bit though. So my next turn, uh, so until turn two, I still have not been able to draw any cards. Normally you want to draw um, in the first few turns to set up your opening hand, but because I had all the cards I needed, um, I simply just set up my board state instead. Uh, meanwhile, my opponent double ices R&D, so this is kind of a big hint that there's nothing on R&D. At this point, most people would be tempted to draw here, but I instead decided to contest the remote because I had the SMC out, I should have enough money to get through ice, and I can click through most of their ice anyway, so that's no problem, and I indeed do trash the Eve. This is, again, something that a lot, a lot of players underestimate. Even though this is a deck that wants to rush out early and try to win before the corp gets set up, you still need to control um, economy to some extent extent and when especially when my opponent does not have a breaker bay grid um it's very easy to make the decision to trash the eve if there were a breaker bay grid there i would definitely have thought twice knowing that a friends was coming on the way and i would not be able to contest the friends um eve and cam uh breaker bay grid campaign so yeah <laughs> that combo so yeah um i must say that um uh, with my superior early starting hand and my opponent's sub par start because they didn't find a breaker bay grid to start off with don't take this match at face value um on average it might be true that um prepaid kate versus food coats is a very bad matchup for prepaid kate however um it, you still will stand a chance because of the tech that you're running 
uh, which is what I'll get to right now. Indexing into Mad Dash, Mad Dash specifically, is such a good card in the current meta where Glacier decks are abound. The reason is this. Um, all the Glacier decks run a uh, full two-pointer suite. All their agendas are two-pointers. Whether it's HP Glacier or Palana Glacier or RP Glacier, they all run Nisei's, ABT's, Vitruvia's, Corporate Sales Team. These agendas are all two-pointers. The only non-two-pointers they will run are global foods, which are worth essentially two points to you as the runner. Therefore, you can only get up to um, six agenda points with three agenda steals, no matter which agendas you steal. That is where Mad Dash comes into play. With Mad Dash, it makes up the last agenda point you need to close out the game, thereby winning in three agenda steals instead of four, and that's a very huge deal when they're only running nine agendas at most. Having to steal three out of nine instead of four out of nine is a big difference. Now, I legwork here again using same old thing to recur legwork because I suspect that my opponent has drawn into agendas by now and they have not been able to recycle those agendas into their deck with Jackson Howard. So I felt this was a very good time to go for a legwork and indeed my opponent raises the one piece of ice I do not want to see, an architect. This is one of the weak points of this prepaid Kate deck. If you draw a lot of your breakers early, you can get into trouble. The mimic that I need to break the architect Surprise, surprise, it's stuck in my hand from my opening hand. And as a result, I'm forced to let my opponent fire the Architect with no other way of breaking the Architect. So this is something you have to be really conscious of when playing such a prepaid Kate deck. If you're running one-off breakers, like say a one-off Mimic, you must be aware that um, you will not have access to the Mimic if you're running uh, with an SMC out. You have to consider if giving your opponent, uh, allowing your opponent to fire uh, the Sentry will result in the game swinging massively in my opponent's favor, and in this case, yes, it does. Even though I got a food, global food, off the back of the legwork, it gave my opponent the ability to ice a third piece of ice on R&D, place a third piece of ice on R&D for free, saving them one click, saving them um, three credits, bec uh, is it three? Yes, three credits, because two for the install, cost and one for the ETF ability. Moreover, it also saves my opponent another click required to draw that very piece of ice. So that architect was a huge, huge, huge tempo swing and it also allowed them to install that Vitruvius which my opponent just got. So suddenly, just by that one architect fire, the tempo of the game massively sw swung in my opponent's favor. Even though it seems like leading um, with four agenda points to two, make no mistake, this is not a good place for me to be in. I need to find a way to close out this game very quickly because the ice on R&D is getting a tad bit ridiculous for my endgame win con, which is indexing. My opponent places right the pressure rightfully, going for an install advance on the remote. Beth draws me into a mad dash. That's my win condition. Oh my gosh. I, this, really, this game really has everything lined up perfectly for me, hasn't it? Um, I really shouldn't be showcasing this match because... Um, everything is just perfect, it's as though I get to manipulate my draws, but here we go. I'm going to index here, and threaten the indexing to Mad Dash win. If I see five, uh, any agenda in the top 5 cards in my opponent's deck, I immediately win, because they have no Jackson threat. They res a Cider Adaptive Barrier, which I break with uh, Lady. They res an Eli, which I again break with Lady. And oh my gosh, it's another Cider Adaptive Barrier. I can't break this one. If I do, I can't re-enter the server because I don't have enough lady counters. And then I realize my opponent's only on one credit left. They've already telegraphed an advanced agenda to remote. That's a big mistake. Big no-no right there. This just automatically wins me the game. As I mad dash into the remote with no resistance at all to steal the winning ABT and mad dash. So that seemed like a very convincing win. My opponent had absolutely no chance at all against my aggression. Or did they? It was very very deceptive. If you did not realize, I was practically locked out of R&D. That was an incredibly well constructed server, despite only containing 3 ice. Cider Eli Cider is basically my nightmare. How am I supposed to get through that when my winning condition is indexing into Mad Dash? Think about it, I'll need to make two successful runs on an R&D with three barriers and my only fractor is a single copy of Cerberus Lady. I was done for. Had I not won the match there and then, I probably would have lost outright because I wouldn't have been able to uh, fulfill my win condition. I would then be forced to score steal two agendas, which is nigh impossible once my opponent gets their eyes in the economy set up. So yeah, that was actually a lot closer than expected. 
And um, if I gave my opponent even one more turn of breeding room, if they had even a few more credits to play the final side game with on the remote, you know, to rest the Caprice and play side games, the outcome outcome would have been vastly different because I was soon getting locked out with all the barriers. In fact, yeah, if you notice, the only ice that were res were barriers. Um, Eli, Cider, Adaptive Barriers, uh, aside from the Architect on HQ. Speaking of that, that was a huge blowout. That Architect, man, um, it brought my opponent back to life. I thought I had them with double leg work, but man, that Architect was so, so good. And it really shows you how punishing can be if your breakers are stuck in your hand because you're not Haley. Sure, uh, you can ask yourself if you want to play Haley instead of Kate, and the answer is, well, if you're playing prepaid voice pad, Kate is almost always the right answer. Uh, because you get to play uh, an opening move of prepaid gamble, whereas Haley cannot do that. Um, I think my leg works were very much on point this game. Uh, two of them were fired, both of them hit one agenda each, which is always nice to have. Um, bringing me up to the magic four points, that essentially four points is match point for this deck, because you are aiming to finish out the game with an indexing to mad dash. So it's very important to note that legworks are so, so important um, early on because their utility vastly, vastly decreases as you move through the game. Uh, once they are able to cycle agendas away from hand with Jackson Howard, once they are able to form a secure scoring remote, that is when they can simply start jamming agendas with Caprices and at that point you can't really contest those agendas. So yes, um, this is very, very reliant on opening hands and indeed, um, uh, this deck is very much uh, affected by the variance of op your opening hand compared to most other Shaper decks. Still, you'll notice that this deck um, has some features which you don't expect to see in Rush decks, most notably that it runs Levy. Um, if you are trying to rush a, an early win, why do you need to uh, go through your deck a second time? Well, Levy has some gives you some late game potential because um, you have to expect that not all games will go your way early on. Maybe you don't draw a single legwork. Um, maybe your legworks miss agendas. Maybe all the agendas are stacked at the bottom of your corpse deck. In these games, you probably will lose anyway, but at least Levy will give you a fighting chance. Um, also, Levy also protects you against some of the other more oblique strategies, such as um, someone trying to recur Batis to kill your rig, or someone playing Potato Sandish trying to mill you out. Levy gets you out of those uh, sticky situations. Finally, to do a bit more deck analysis, I think my deck is just a wee bit too slow uh, for what I want to do, which is to fire off a successful leg work by turn 4. Um, I and me, Andromeda might just be the better um, ID for this, honestly, because after doing some hand simulations on Netrunner DB, where I tried to play out the first couple of turns, I find that it takes me more than 4 turns most of the time to get set up. Uh, with uh, SMC and a leg work with enough money to get through uh, most pieces of ice. This is a, this is a big problem. Um, most of the problems come down to the fact that this deck just doesn't have enough card draw. I've already maxed out on my deck slots and it's very hard to make any uh, replacements. Even with the engine of 3 diesel, 2 quality time and 2 uh, Bethy Macbeth, <laughs> uh, Beth Kirin Chang, um, it's still this deck is still very much one in want of card draw. Um, I could try to go out to 3 quality times, but QT isn't really a card you want to see early on because it saps away at the economy you need to um, bring out breakers anyway. So yeah, I'm still struggling to find a good solution and the answer might be that just isn't one right now. Um, either that or I would have to compromise other uh, aspects of my deck, such as the breaker efficiency or having a clock threat in order to get more events that will propel my deck on uh, to allow me to draw the cards I need faster. So yeah, it's very hard building such a deck and it might not be tier 1 right now, it probably isn't, but it's still a good deck to try out if you're looking to get some fast games going for some fast paced action out of Shaper. I think it's a pretty fun deck and is a rather interesting take on uh, prepaid Kate. Perhaps it will make you realize the importance of running HQ early and often because that's often the way you win even in a regular prepaid Kate deck uh, that strives to drag the game on uh, into the later game where you do assemble all three prepaid voice pads and are bursting your way to maximum money. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this interesting and enjoyable. See you around. Happy net running. Goodbye.